फ्रेंड्स इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी ऑब्जर्व द इक्वेशन टू कैलकुलेट द नंबर ऑफ पार्टिकल्स एंड यूनिट सेल्स इन अ गिवन एक्स ग्राम ऑफ मेटेलिक क्रिस्टल सो बाय यूजिंग दिस इक्वेशन वी सॉल्व द सम ऑफ द एग्जांपल सो फ्रॉम दिस वन देयर इज नंबर ऑफ पार्टिकल्स इन एक्स ग्राम मेटल वी कैन कैलकुलेट बाय यूजिंग दिस इक्वेशन दैट इज एक्स एन अपॉन रो ए टू वेर एक्स इज द अमाउंट ऑफ दैट सब्सटन प्रोवाइडेड एन इज द नंबर ऑफ पार्टिकल्स इन दैट पर्टिकुलर टाइप ऑफ क्रिस्टल लाटाइज रो इज द डेंसिटी एंड ए क्यूब इज द वॉल्यूम और ए इज द एज लेंथ हेयर सिमिलरली द नंबर ऑफ यूनिट सेल्स इन दैट एक्स ग्राम ऑफ मेटर वी कैन कैलकुलेट बाई यूजिंग दिस इक्वेशन दैट इज जस्ट एक्स अपॉन रो ए क्यू एंड द नंबर ऑफ यूनिट सेल्स इन वॉल्यूम वी ऑफ मेटर इज कैलकुलेट बाई v upon a q okay so we solve this example in last lecture and 1.4 is also we can solve now look at the problem 1.5 so here we read this problem first carefully and then from this one we can find out the solution so look at the problem 1.5 niobium forms bcc structure the density of niobium is 8.55 g per cubic centimeter and length of unit cell h is 330.6 picometer how many atoms and unit cells are present in 0.5 g of niobium that means if we read this carefully here we have to be calculate the number of atoms and unit cell present in that given amount of 0.5 g of niobium so first we can find out the solution so given data provide us the solution first that is number of atoms in x gram niobium we know that the equation is equal to that is xn upon rho a cube the x is the volume a uh, value which is given of that particular substance that is a niobium so x is equal to 0.5 g of niobium is provided and here the crystal structure is of the type of bcc so from this one we know that the number of constituent particles in bcc type structure that is equal to 2 so n is equal to 2 density rho is provided 8.55 g per cubic centimeter and here the h length is also given that is 336 330.6 picometer now density is given in gram per cubic centimeter so that's why here we can convert this value of is like in picometer into centimeter so we can write it that is 3.306 into 10 raised to minus 8 centimeter so in this way here we get the value of x n rho and a so we put up this value in this equation we get the number of atom so number of atoms in 0.5 gram of niobium is equal to 0.5 Into two upon eight point fifty five into three point three zero six into ten raised to minus eight. That is a s length and s length q in this equation. So we can write the bracket q. So by solving this one, that is point five into two. That is simply one. We can just uh, round up this one to rough calculation. That is three three q. That means it is a near about twenty seven. And this one is a eight point five. That means we can say that is if we adjust this unit, that is it is ten raised to minus twenty four, eight minus ten uh, raised to minus eight into three, that is eight minus twenty four. And if we here this one, uh, that is just twenty seven. Here we can we can adjust the digit, and if we calculate, we get the rough answer as well. It comes to be three point twenty five into ten raised to twenty one. So that is the number of atoms present in the point five gram of niobium. Now. we are going to calculate the number of unit cells in x gram so we know that the equation that is equal to x upon rho a cube just we put up these values here if we look here the difference between this equation here x n upon rho a cube and here it is only x upon rho a cube that means we just we cannot put the value of n here or if we get this answer we can simply divide the value of n that is divided by 2 we get directly answer also here in this uh, in your text so this one is the mis mistake here here they take same as it is so here the 
we should not consider 2 here because if the, in the equation there is a no n, n n is cancelled out whenever we derive this equation. So it is just x upon rho a cube. So here we always, uh, uh, we does not consider 2 value here, it is by mistake or print mistake here in that textbook. So just we can say that is 0.5 upon 8.55 into 3.306 into 10 to minus 8 brackets q. So we get the answer 1.62 into 10 raised to 21 or if we divide this one also by the 2 because one of the 2 here 2 is extra okay so we get also the same answer that really is 1.62 into 10 raised to 21 so simply we can calculate this one now look at the next one problem 1.6 release problem first carefully a compound forms hexagonal cubic packed structure what is the number of first that is a octahedral voids b tetrahedral voids c total voids form in 0.4 mole of it that means number of moles of that substance is given and we have to be find out the total number of voids if we read this problem even though here we observe that it is a hexagonal close pack but the slabbers in the slabbers cubic close pack or we can say that is a FCC that one is omitted but even though the FCC or uh, we can say CCP is also a are given but the number of whites and tetrahedral whites is common in all this one so we can solve the problem related to this one okay only we cannot solve the problems by using the equations of that is the radius radius ratio or radius and the edge length but this type of problem we can easily solve so now number of atoms in 0.4 mole that means in 1 mole we can just say that is whatever the substance if it is 1 mole we know that number of particles that is nothing but it is equal to Avogadro's number Na so for 0.4 mole it is 0.4 into Na so we put up the value of Avogadro number 0.4 into 6.022 into 10 raised to 23 and here we get the answer 2.4098 into 10 raised to 23 number of atoms in 0.4 mole now we know that the relation, the number of octahedral voids and the number of tetrahedral voids. So if number of uh, uh, suppose if n is the number of particles, so the octahedral voids is same as the number of particles, and the number of tetrahedral voids is exactly double the number of particles. So we can just put up these values. So number of octahedral voids is equal to number of atoms. So the value is same: 2.4098 into 10 raised to 23. Second one, the number of tetrahedral voids. We know that the number of tetrahedral voids is exactly double the number of atoms or number of particles. So 2 into 2.4098 into 10 raised to 23 is equal to 4.818 into 10 raised to 23. And so from this one, that is number of tetrahedral voids and sum of the number of tetrahedral voids gives the total number of voids. So we just take the sum of these two and the answer comes to be 7.227 into 10 raised to 23. So that is the total number of piles present in that particular type of crystal lattice. So all these about the problems related to these uh, equations. Now we are going to solve or uh, we are going to study the next one important topic in this chapter that is here crystal defects or imperfections. So we know that whenever we are talking about the uh, crystal structures so as they are crystal structures so we know that how they are formed that is there is a in the crystalline structures there is a regular arrangement of constituent particles and that constituent particles is uh, occupy their proper position that is the lattice point in that particular crystals so we know that there are different types of crystal system uh, due to their arrangement, there are 14 Bravais lattices. So, as these constituent particles are properly placed, so if they are properly placed, then we get a perfect crystals. But in real manner, here, or we can say naturally, it is uh, impossible to obtain the such perfect crystal structures. And so, there is a somewhat irregularities in the arrangement of constituent particles of a solid crystal that is called as defects or imperfections that means 
if we observe any natural crystalline substance or real substance the constituent particles in that particular crystal is not arranged perfectly there is somewhat imperfections or somewhat defects in that one and that is called as the crystal defects or imperfection that means these constituent particles may be somewhat miss their lattice point or they are arranged somewhat different place than their lattice point position so they always create defects or that is called as the imperfections also now so what is the reason behind the cause of the defects so how why such type of imperfections or defects are created in that crystalline structures or in that particular crystals so the first one that is a causes of defect the disorder or irregularities in the stacking of atoms that means you know we are saying that that is the constituent particles which we are uh, which we are present in that particular crystal they are somewhat irregular it shows or they are disorder whenever its atoms are particularly stacked in that crystal second one this type of defects or imperfections are created during crystallization process that means whenever the constituent crystalline solids are form and whenever they are form the crystalline solid if the crystallization is not taken properly or somewhat impurities get added or if they are not naturally cool or somewhat due to the climate changes they are fast cooling is there and that's why whatever with the the uh, position that constituent particles get they occupy that position in that crystal and that's why there is a defect or imperfection is created this such type of defects are minimized if crystallization carried out at a slower rate for example a better example is that is a we know that the ice the crystal ice if we carried out the cooling process that is called as a freezing that is water liquid water to ice if we carried out the fast cooling of that water then the crystal ice obtain that is a crystal of ice obtain is shows the imperfection it is not shows the sharp structure because as we pass cool it the particular molecules of that water always take the position whatever they get and so the crystal obtain in such type of fast cooling process is not a perfect but at the same time if we naturally cool the water at 0 degree celsius it takes more time but this time or this duration always place that water molecule at its proper position that means that water molecules take their proper lattice point position and that's why there is a minimization of the defects or the imperfection is occur because they get a suitable time to occupy that particular lattice point position but if we carry out the fast cooling or fast freezing they does not get the sufficient time to take their position or to go their particular lattice point position that's why they always uh, we can say that is uh, take the position whatever they get nearby position and that's why there is a more and more defects or we can say that is imperfections is occur whenever it is carried out a cooling at a fast rate so this is one more of the important point or the cause of the defects or the imperfections next one point 100% pure ideal crystals with no imperfections are possible only at absolute zero of temperature that means if we have to be prepared the ideal crystal or the crystal in which there is no imperfection no defects such type of crystals are obtained whenever we provide absolute zero of temperature then and then such type of crystals are obtained otherwise not if there is a slight change in the temperature absolute zero temperature then it always causes the defects or the imperfection so that is the important point here 
so whenever we are talking about the real and natural crystal substance they do not have perfect crystal structure that means whatever the crystals we are observe in the nature they are not perfect they have somewhat deep shows the defects and we know that because they are always find out at a natural temperature and pressure so obviously here they shows the imperfections so that is about the crystal defects and their causes now uh, we are going to study these crystal defects in detail so the crystal defects or imperfections here we say are get divided into three types of defects so look at this chart and in this chart here we can find out how they are get classified the defects get classified into three main categories point defects line defects and plane defects for this year 12th science that means overall for this 12th science in your textbook only we are going to study the point defects line defects and plane defects is not included in your 12th chemistry syllabus only we studied the point defects in this solid set 12 for the 12th science course so these point defects are get further classified into three major categories that is point defects they classify into the first stoichiometric defects second b impurity defect and c non stoichiometric defects that means these point defects are further classified into stoichiometric defects stoichiometric defects impurity defects and the non stoichiometric defect so these stoichiometric defects are further get classified into the four types of defects that is first one vacancy defect look at this one that is stoichiometric defects are classified into four four categories that is first one vacancy defect safe interdiction defect short key defect and trinkle defect so these are the four classes of this stoichiometric defects second one the impurity defects get classified into the two categories first substitutional defect interstitial impurity defect and the c non stoichiometric defect also get classified into two categories metal deficiency defect and metal excess defect so in this way we can observe one by one these points thank you